Good morning, everyone. This is the famous Ritchie Brothers, where a lot of the rollovers I do come to die like a graveyard. We're going to be doing a huge, absolutely massive 110,000 pound job for a, a wrecked crane. And this is what it looks like. I mean, I'm not kidding when I say the place is massive. This is the line to get in. It's all kinds of uh, heavy duty equipment and whatnot. We're just waiting on the crane to arrive. We'll be entering from here and I think uh, trying to find where our final spot is to do the lift is going to be. But I figured I'd get this drone up and running. Familiar myself with these new controls. And that's little old us right there. Mm. This thing is such a trip to fly, man. I'm new to the FPV world, so this stuff crazy. But you can get some insane shots. Like this. <laughs> The only thing is, it's so sensitive, you gotta be careful. You don't hit anything. Nice. Nice. All right, we're done here. Let's go home. I'll get back to you guys when uh, the crane's here. All right, a cool 40 minutes later, and here we go. <laughs> This isn't the crane, obviously, uh, but it's a 40,000 pound attachment that we'll be offloading after the crane. So there you go, Hulk and Big Flipper, lines are parted, and I'm going to be extensively using our load cells, those uh, mass load load cells that I, I use on these big jobs. I tend to not use them as much on containers because Alex and I, we've just done 10,000 of them, so we pretty much know the ins and outs and you know all the forces on each corner at any given moment but on something like this on a hundred and ten thousand pound unit it's vital well this is the counterweight it doesn't look like forty thousand pounds to me but i have no idea who that is what's up man huh you do What's up, brothers? What's up, man? What are you driving? Okay, I thought you were the crane guy. Nah. That we were gonna offload. So you're just a fan of the channel. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> you came from Texas? No, my boy's on, but he's FaceTiming me right now. <laughs> oh, I'm what with is? Alex and Josh from <laughs> Pepe's. Hey, okay, boo. What's up, man? What up? <laughs> <laughs> His face like he just saw Kanye West or something. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> you guys keep it up. You guys are real, though. Thank you, man. Appreciate that, man. <laughs> That's funny. Should have told him he signed autographs for 20 bucks. Well, that's cool. That's why I always say I got the best fans. Look at that love, man. You can't fake that. Holy smokes, guys. They were not kidding. This thing is freaking ginormous compared to my trucks. You know what, we're all for it. We always are. Hey Alex, stand next to it for a sense of scale. <laughs> Dang, bro. Ooh. No wonder my dad wanted three trucks on this. Yeah, yeah you could say that again. As long as it's got some wicked lift points, we got this. I ain't scared. Come back here. We're gonna need a ton of height though. What's up, man? <coughs> well, the reason it's all damaged up here is because this is, like I said, Richie Brothers. This is where all the tra crash trucks and stuff go. This is like an auction yard, like a coal part. You get stuff like this on the cheap cheap. This thing must have rolled over because this is bent and all messed up right here. All right there. That or it hit something. All right, so the driver's telling me that when the crane had it up in the air, it was a buck 20. 
buck 25, which is closer to 120, 120, 125,000 pounds. That throws things off a bit. It could be, man. It could be 7050. It just depends how we bring it up. If we bring it up even or with your end slightly higher or lower and I compensate. We're going to have Alex get this end because this boom has to go over this. And since Flipper is obviously the stronger truck with the bigger boom, it'll be easier for Flipper and I get this end with the counterweight. That way my boom can be about the same height as that right there. I won't have to go as high and out. Well, this is all solid. No matter how you slice it, this is a hard job. That's why I got the load cells. In fact, let me show you what it looks like set up. This shackle you see is actually a load cell. I've used it a ton before, but this is what it looks like. It's a Crosby shackle. 34,000 pound working load limit on this configuration. And then this, this is a sensor right here. It's wireless, if you could believe it. So it transmits the amount of force I'm seeing on here to my wireless load zone. That's how I can monitor when something's spiking. In fact, a ton of you guys have emailed me or asked me in the comments, and I cannot recommend these ones enough. This one's my OG one. I've had this one for a few years already, and the tension link is my personal favorite over the, over the shackle only because of the shape of it. These ones are good for direct overhead overhead lifting because you got to get, you know, this and the pin right here in the middle. This one though is a lot more forgiving on the angles. And it's a 50,000 pound working load limit, if you could believe that. Well, Alex has his mass, mass load ones up in the front. So because of the weight of this thing, and I'm expecting it to be more than 110, um, obviously we'll be using the load cells very, very closely to wirelessly monitor the force. Make sure we're not uh, exceeding the working load limit on anything. Um, I'm going to back up to it, and I believe Alex is as well, just to be safe. I know like 99% of every video we post on this is off the side. I just prefer working off the side. So rotators are built for, but in case this thing is like, you know, 10, 15,000 pounds over, that's a world of difference when you're dealing with, you know, over 100,000 pounds. So better safe than sorry. I know Hulk can easily, easily do about half of this if I'm backed up to it. I've done half of it off the side, but it's ugly. You start to get into floating. And even though we're in a controlled environment, it's not safe. And when it comes to this much weight, I'd rather just do it in one shot right the first time. We'll see how long it takes till we get there. Well, all that time is finally here. They got uh, the position of where they want this. It's not going to be easy. This part's the uh, counterweight. We're gonna do this after, but then they're just gonna stage them first. Where's the actual crane at? Let's go find them. Bad mofo, look at this thing. Well, this is going to be very fun. All hands on deck for this. And Alex and I thought about it. We're going to be heroes and Superman this baby. Off the side. 
the cool thing is since we're in such a controlled environment let's say uh we're not liking it we could just drop it and back up to it but because of the space requirements here where they want it in this specific spot we think uh, off the site is best but we're in position but now they uh they want to move the crane forward I think like 10, 15 feet because this thing's so long, they don't want it to stick out into the, the back row too much. Let me just go in with the boom where the guy can pull forward. They said it's sticking out too far in that row, so they want to go like 10 feet forward. You notice Alex has his lines parted too, and then he's going to throw up his load, so... Well, the reason you part the lines is because each line, well, they're different. Mine are about 17,000, Alex's are like 20 something thousand, 22.5. Then you double them up with the snatch block, and then a third line. And that's what that looks like. But for mine, it would be 17, 34, 51 per side. Of course, you're limited by your weakest link. In this case, would probably be the shackle. That's a 21 ton shackle, each one. So, 21 ton is 42,000 pounds. I don't expect to see that much per line. I guess we'll just wait for him to pull forward. Well, I don't think he's going to be able to drive forward, this guy, since he has 110 foot total length. You're gonna need a lot of room to pull out forward and all this stuff is dead right here. And that's not an exit right here. So he's gonna have to pull out far enough to not hit our trucks and then make this turn. So he's pushing it as it is from right there. Another spot? Yeah. Uh-oh. Well, that's why I hate flat rating jobs for dumb stuff like this. It is what it is, though. It makes it technically easier for us. I actually like this third spot the best. This guy's going to be able to just back up in there and then just pull out straight. Third time's the charm, guys. This is the final position, I guess. Very excited about this lift. Alex and I are going to be doing this literally back to back. Are you feeling off the side still? Good. Yeah? Right Worst case scenario, we float, don't do it. I delete the video and we do it from the back. <laughs> 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 just kidding, guys. If that happens, you'll see it. It's just, uh, like I mentioned, we, we exclusively work off the side. It's just very rare to have this much weight. Looking at it again, and uh, I'm comfortable. Especially since I have the two load cells. Hey Josh, 
What? Dude, when I went up and look, I'm going down. Look at his hand. He's grabbing the. Dude, he's grabbing the cable. He's guiding it for you. Yeah. Get out of here, <laughs> <laughs> dude. That's a trip. This thing has damage in all the weirdest places. It's like almost 360. Like it flipped and it literally rolled over. Maybe someone's watching this video that knows what happened to this crane. Drop the info in the comments and I'll pin it. And this is what I mean by one shackle per eye. Well, we had horrendous standby time. We already got all our cables parted, ready to rock. I'm super excited to see what my mass load, load cells say. You know that company, they worked with me for I don't know how many years. I found them because uh, when we did California Tow Trick Association training, one of the instructors had mentioned that the most important thing you can buy for your truck is a load cell. So many people are oblivious to the actual forces involved in lifting because you know some of these rotators are so big you can brute force a lot of stuff but there's a lot of accidents in the industry i looked into it and settled with that big monster but they make them in all kinds of sizes i'm going to reach out to them see if they want to partner up like the bailey's whole kit but this one I'll see if I can drop their info in the comments. Or oh, whoever's interested in. You good? Nice. Let me see that shackle to you. So? Yeah. Like I was saying, I'll, I'll drop the link to uh, the load cell in the comments. I highly recommend for anybody. Don't even get the big. It's in free spool. Of course, this got caught. Never failed. Okay. Unstuck it. So, like I was saying. Anyone in the towing industry, any kind of lifting, logging, rigging, whatever, they're so vital. They are so vital and one of the best learning tools you can possibly get. Hulking flipper are decked out with all the best goodies, but the load saw has to be one of the best investments I've ever made. All right, I'm good. What? The remote? <laughs> Did you leave them inside? <clears throat> no. Oh, he's looking for the remote. No. Lower it a little bit, Josh. Yeah? You ready?
<laughs> Are you ready? I'll tell you when. Alex, show your load cell. Show the load cell on the camera. 40? Oh my God, Alex has seen 40 on just one line. Forty one, forty two. Let me see if this is eighty. This is eighty, and this is about a buck twenty. I'm seeing forty. I am so mad I lost my load so all this talk about how important they are and I lost the wireless receivers I left them on the other side I bet I'm gonna find them right now and let me walk over After the job's done, of course. Where's your drone? Up there, on the floor. <laughs> Let me see your load cell. What's the load cell saying? I have 41. So now that it's stabilized, just have to walk around 36,000 pounds for just one end. Double that, we got 72. Trucks are very stable. Um, you ready? I'm gonna stand on mine, bro. 36,000 pounds on just one end. Now, of course, if you figure the center of gravity should be right in front of the cab for the manual thing, Alex has more of the weight. It's probably a 65-35 split. But this was one of the reasons um, why I was hired. They used the crane to load it. But a crane of this size, you have to assemble them. They're huge. They, they need a trailer to follow them with all the counterweights. It's a full crew. All the time spent here was just finding a, a freaking spot to put this thing in. But once you park the rotators next to something like this, it's game over. You cannot beat the speed and efficiency of this. And then in about 10 minutes flat, all the rigging's put away. Boom off the back, outriggers in and we're out of here. Those lines start to show slack, we're done. I just put my truck in high speed idle, kill the camera, and we put everything away. 
We still have to waffle this. Uh, where's the other guy? Do Do they know where they're gonna put that? I don't know. <laughs> Cause I was gonna say, bro, you could probably back up here. How much does that counterweight weigh? Fifty. Five zero? No way. Cause we could pick it up off this side and and, and swing it, but I don't. They they haven't told us where to put it. Yeah. All right, yeah. Yeah, but that's, not good. that's what the crane operator said over there. It was 50,000. Wow. Right? Does it feel like 50 when you're heavy, dude? Yeah? yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, got, it's got numbers on it, so it's at least 40 something. They gave it to me as 40 in an email, but I wouldn't doubt 50. <laughs> There's like the carrier piece. I think that's like four or five. I'm going to say at least for sure 44. Well, Rick, for 50. I'll ask Homeboy where he wants it. You're done, bro. I gotta get those chains off the front. Okay. Hey, I'm really mad about my load cell remotes, man. I bet you I left them on the other side. Yeah? Probably. I bet you I was seeing about 20 each. Yeah? Yeah, probably. It, it didn't feel like 30 each. There's no way. It handled it too easy for that. Sir, where are you gonna want the counterweight? I was telling him if you guys could put it like, right? Right in this area. <clears throat> and the jib part too, the big long one. Cause that's gonna stick out a lot if you see his uh, trailer. We can we can offload the jib. We just can't touch that counterweight, it's too heavy. We'll do the counterweight. So you want it as close under here as possible? Dude, I would just put it, yeah. Just right on this side of the cone, just right here. Even if it's right here on this corner, dude, just right here. Where's your trailer at? He wants to like in this general area. Okay. <clears throat> are you guys gonna stay here? Or are you guys gonna move it? Well, we'll have to move because you're probably gonna have to back up here, right? Well, if you guys, I was gonna say, I was gonna pull up along there. But then again, wherever you guys want it. Let me see how it looks on your trailer and we'll tell you right now. Alex, I didn't leave it in any of your boxes. I didn't leave my remotes in any of your boxes or the cab. Check, I don't think so. I'm gonna have to hit up Maslow for some new ones. That's embarrassing, man. One of the heaviest off the side tandem lifts we've ever done. And I lost the freaking remotes for my load cells. Nah, that won't make a difference for us. Either way. Either and way. I'd rather have it on the front. Okay. I didn't even use my FPV drone for this part either. That part would be impossible because we need uh, goggles for that. Oh, man. Whoa, look at this. Ejecto Cito, cuz. We'll put this away later because Alex and I might work that counterweight in tandem. In case, I don't know. In case we gotta rotate it. Well, you know what? They told me the crane was 110 in the email, but this guy said it 125. Yeah, I see 28,000. We use 24,000 and then you have a smaller piece of tab that we saw. 8, and it's all combined. Let's have him put his truck first and then we can each grab it from, we'll tandem it. Okay. Dude, well, where are they at? Just right here, dude. Just um, like this, right here. Katie would have saw it. Jim, <laughs> Jim Katie? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, you guys probably don't know, but Jim Katie's uh, owner of 10 West Towing ginormous company you think pepe's is big with nice trucks those guys those guys are the real deal but jim katie himself he's a giant man he's like seven foot tall so as alex and i have to jump up to move our levers like that he towers over them like this but i got good news for you guys now that i found these we're gonna offload the guy with the counterweight and stick around because we're gonna do something super cool i'm gonna relift this 
in the exact same spot in the exact same spot and then we're gonna um what was okay that was my outrigger and then i'll put the load cells on mine and that way i'll see how much the front has compared to the back we'll throw the drone underneath and it'll be cool do some nice cinematic stuff now that we know for sure our trucks are more than capable of this so what they want to do is uh obviously the jib can be done with this but because that thing weighs about 50 We're gonna need our rotator, so once he gets this out of the way, we're gonna reposition and uh, lift that. And then we'll do some glory shots with that baby. I'll have my two load cells now that I found them, and Alex is gonna re-switch his load cell to the other side. That way, without a doubt, we'd have measured every single corner of that. And again, these load cells are not a, it's not like a weight scale where you step on it and it tells you your weight, but it's similar. In the sense where you step on a, a weight scale, you're putting pressure on it, right? Your the body, your force of your body, and that's how it can measure how much weight you are. This measures the force of, of whatever you're lifting. So I like these load cells better a ton more. That's why, uh, if you'll notice, we don't have the built-in load cells for the booms. I prefer being able to control what forces I want to read. So I could put this like on the corner of the actual eyelid I'm lifting on. I could put it at the top of the boom. I could put it at the end of the snatch block anywhere. And they're a lot more accurate. Ooh, watch him clip that truck. <laughs> dude, we've been here for four and a half hours. What's that? We've been here for like four and a half hours. Oh, dude. You, you got here about half an hour before the other guy. But they wanted us to waffle this first. I thought we'd be out of here by like 2.30. <laughs> When I, well, I didn't even know you guys were here for this. When I pulled up, I saw you guys. I seen I you too. I thought you were just checking it out. Well, once I seen you, I was like, oh, the crane's going to be right behind him. They... I thought you guys were doing something else. I thought, if anything, I thought this guy would have a, uh, a crane ready. Nah, National Recovery, who hired us, said they specifically wanted us over a crane because a crane would take too long to set up. And I saw those guys setting up too, and I was like, but they should have, at least a few trucks should have been here already. So I'm like, they're not coming. Yeah, because real cranes, they take a long time to set up and put away. That's probably oh, what yeah. did it. That's like, by the time I pick it up, it's going to fix this orientation. And I can place it right there where he wants it. Okay. I'll just do that. Go for it, man. I'll get my other load cell. I'm still so mad I misplaced these load cell remotes, but don't worry. I will make it up to you guys. In fact, I'm kind of glad it happened because I wouldn't have thought to do the lift again if I had them the first time. And... Now that I know it's safe and we could do it, now when we do it again, there's no pressure of anyone trying to leave or anything. And uh, we can get some crazy cinematic shots. We'll see about that 50,000, man. I don't know. They could be. You have your load cell remote? Yeah. Oh, hold them. So this one is the one on my left. And then the one Alex is about to give me is the one on the right. You lost it like I did? No, I left it in here. I don't want no one to call us a liar in case it is 50. Okay. Whoa, 9,000. And the other one has zero. That one's already at 10. Now look how fast it jumps. Thousands in under a second. Go for it. You're over 20 combined so far. Yeah. Oh wow, it just hit 30. 20 and 12. This one's 19 on your right. Okay, now you're 17, 17. 
You're not even airborne yet, man. You're over 40, 42. Yeah, we're gonna need my truck now. Hold it there. So the one on the left is 23, 22. Yeah, this is about 45, man, the guy was right. So that's why I parked my truck right there. I'm gonna help Alex out. He's gonna get it as close as he can and then we're gonna re-rig. Just under 45,000. So right now it's stabilizing. You could say more or less. Let's run down what we'll call it 44,000. If you pause it here and combine the two. This thing is 44,000, I would never figure. 44. Then uh, I'm gonna help him out. We'll re rig and I'll get those two sides and he'll get those two sides. I'll go to here. Teamwork makes the dream work. This side more. Extend out. We'll drop it there, hold on. Cable out. Sweet. Maybe I could even pull it with the... Yeah, get rid of tension. I'm going to pull it a little bit. Just on one side. Booyah! That was easy. Now for the glory lift. Best believe these are going to be some calendar shots, man. Yes, sir. Huh? When we're done? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we waited three and a half hours for them to find a spot. They could wait 25 minutes. Good old babies, boy. I freaking love these, dude. One? These ones? We're crazy strong, man. Two in a basket? 
52 in the basket, man. Yeah, I haven't eaten yet. My dad said he's got some uh, burritos for us at the shop. I'm like, cool, dad, I'll eat those at 8 o'clock when we get back. That's the last time I get you ungrateful. Ten minutes later, we are rigged up. This is going to be so cool. Now I got both my load cells. This one's reading 80, which is the one on the right. This one's reading 100, the one on the left. Very curious. Oh, and we switched Alex's load cell to the other side. That way I'd have an accurate reading on every single corner. And because our line of action is inwards like this, it's going to be pretty close to accurate. Obviously, the farther out you go, your angle spreads, the more force you see. Doesn't mean that the thing weighs heavier, it's just the force. If that makes sense. Whoa, I'm already at 6,000 and 3,000. 3, Hold on. Wait. All right. These will be my two and that's yours on three. Oh, that's a good idea. Two, one, blast off. Ego lift. I'm at about 15,000, 16,000, 17, 20, 23, 24, 26. Almost 40. I'm airborne. Alex is at 32, 33, 34, 35. You spiked that 35. Going with the other one more. Good. It's cables only. I had a lot more than I thought. Check it out. One's at 25, the other's at 18, 17. Yeah. So this is the this is the other important part of load cells is your lines are never gonna be hundred percent equal tension ever, 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 ever. So this one's reading 20. This one's reading 23. So I'm seeing 43,000 pounds. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Thing just spiked to 48. the other like other side that's probably why that's seen so much See right there? 34 now going with both of them all right and this is what it looks like from the other side this is the non FPV drone the normal drone I want to see uh uh oh, I got this counterweight in the way now. Keep going. Huh. 
<laughs> That's cool. Alright, that was a fun eagle lift to test all the numbers. Let me show you guys one more time. So my two lines... I'm reading about 47, 48,000 pounds on just my end. And then Alex is reading 35,000 on one end and you're even. So you're seeing 70, 70 right now. Yeah. So 70 and about 45, bro. That's, a, that's very close to 120. Give or take a thousand. Cause like right now this side's 3,000 more than this one. So who knows, maybe the other side's 3,000 more. So about a buck 20 was right. Alright, wanna drop it and head, out, head home? Let me get some uh let me see that picture. Is that at the entrance? Yes. Uh-oh. Oh, buddy. Yeah. That just happened right now? Yes. yes. Yeah, we can help you out. We're done here. Yes. Let me put the trucks away and we'll go. You're at the entrance? Yes. I'll meet you there. Wow, what are the odds, man? We're over here filming. I'm glad we stayed because customer's about to roll uh some equipment off of his trailer we came seen our trucks and decided let me uh hire them okay now let's go cables in a lot more huh? cables in i want to get some nice glory shots with the drone <clears throat> So that's pretty cool, guys. I don't care what you say, that's impressive. Off the side, too. That means we could have manhandled way more weight off the back. Yeah, final numbers. We went even higher, 22, 25, 35. Take some cannon pictures. I'll take some drone pictures. We, we don't get this opportunity enough. So we got a guy in distress. We're gonna go help right now. Our job here is done. Ego lift complete. Who needs an FPV drone? The Mavic 3 can handle just fine. All right, we're out of here, guys. That's the sign of the battery dying. We'll charge them up while we load up the other guy and we'll probably record that at the end. And if I don't, peace. Well, this guy wasn't kidding. This isn't bad. I mean, it is, but if these binders weren't here, those tires are already off the edge. Oh, that one's completely off. I told the guy, give me a couple hundred bucks and you'll get two top of the line rotators to deadlift this for you. He's beyond happy, man. This is the city of Paris, by the way. Yes, there's a Paris in California, believe it or not. What are the odds? I know in some of the comments, uh, we do these a lot, man. And some people say just tighten it. Well, you could do that to a certain extent, right? Um, in this case, he wanted to drive up back to this little dock, that makeshift dock. That's gonna take them forever. That's gonna be very difficult with it leaning like that. So we're already here. Ugh. Why not do it the easy way? In 10 minutes flat, this is gonna be on the ground. You know what, let's see, it's 6.03 right now. You guys see that? Can I speak this way? Uh, yeah. Hold on. Hello? Hey, guys. Hey, how's it going? Not bad, but... Uh, okay, thank you. Uh. Well, that was weird. That guy just dipped into my time. Look, he wasted three minutes. 
I guess that guy's boss wasn't aware of the situation. Uh, they're Eastern European. The driver told his boss, because I guess he called him for an update why he's not dropped it, and he mentioned there's some trucks here. And they're hooking up to my truck. He thought we were impounding him. I was like, bro, your driver didn't explain it to you what happened, did he? This guy's uh, about to roll over. I'm saving him. I'm the guy that's helping him. I'm not, I'm not trying to impound him. But it's all good. I bet you once he found out the thing, he thought we were going to charge like 2000 1500 something like that. Try to do people a favor and it backfires, huh? I'm going to go on the other side and, and eyeball it. Go oh, 618 right now, guys. So much for five. I mean, uh, 613 on the ground. A stupid phone call with the boss. And then just really quick, my shackles, I wasn't comfortable with them in that hole. So uh, I swapped them out for chain. Take off your chains. It's secure. It's going nowhere now. Good, thank you. Man, your boss is mad. <laughs> All right, once you get these off, we'll lift you up. Quick and easy. <laughs> I should mess with this boss and call him and say, I want 2,000 or I don't drop it. Teach him a lesson. It's nice. Whoa. Whoa. Gotta release the trailer brakes. Oh, no wonder he dropped it, huh? Oh, es que por qué? Es que por qué? Just get the drone out and everything. <laughs> All right, we'll drop it, but don't derig. Three, two, one, anime. <laughs> oh, I, I like that lift better than the crane. Yeah, I don't like that super stuff. Beautiful chain, that's beautiful chain, Josh. Except those Omega links, I hate those. I hate them. Wow, what a day. All day or huh? You know, we left the yard at 10.30 a.m. Yeah. Uh, oh man, eight, eight hours so far. And then 90 minutes to get back. Uh, like an hour and a half. You want to get my dad mad? Call him and like, hey, uh, how are you going to handle the overtime today? Click. All better. You got anything else for us while we're here? Yeah. Cause once we're gone, we're gone, man. No, it's not good. <laughs> I'm glad you were here. What are the odds? I'm, I'm gonna take care of that right now. His boss was not happy. Yeah.
I was like, bro, it's not like I'm charging you. Like we're coming from, we're already here. It's super dirt cheap. But he thought he thought something else happened. I guess the driver didn't explain what what really happened. Dude, they never do. It's always. A show. Yeah. So I cleared it up with them, but I was like, "Don't come at me hot when I'm trying to save you." You know, call someone else, wait an hour, and who knows what you're gonna pay? Just. Well, it was either you guys helped him, or he's gonna have to come back in the morning. So. Oh man, that's horrible. What time are you guys close? Oh, uh, we're already closed, dude. He's gonna come back in the morning anyway to load this back up. Gotcha. <clears throat> okay, once I get this out, I can take the chains off. We're uh, ready. So, yeah, can you give me uh, your number? Okay, yeah. uh, don't forget to give us the receipt. Okay, I'll get it to you right now. All right, brother. Okay, bye. Hey, Jose, you know, now he's arguing with the, the people here. <clears throat> We're making them come back tomorrow. All right, we got that situated. The guy, <laughs> the guy, he's mad. <laughs> he's going all the way to Texas like that. I just had to talk to the guy's boss and give him a, an invoice because he wants a detailed receipt and accounting of what happened. So I figured, here, bro, just take these pictures. I can't speculate on what happened, but people make mistakes. <clears throat> and just like that, we are out of here, guys. Fun, fun job all day. Worked out perfect. We ended up helping that guy. Got chewed out by his boss and settled it. Ugh, turn that off. Now for the 90 minute drive back home. Hope you guys enjoy this fun day. Peace. What up YouTube and thanks for sticking around for Josh's breakdown as we discuss this absolutely monster lift. This is easily one of the heaviest Alex and I have done in tandem off the side. That's why I love doing these crazy things I do, these big jobs and training in the yard like when I lifted Big Flipper off the side. I do crazy stuff like that. So when I get a job like this and it ends up being heavier, you know, closer to 120,000 pounds in my head, I know for a fact that I'm able to do it. Everything was rigged to perfection. And we actually got this job through National Recovery USA. For that reason, we worked with them in the past, so they know our work. And even though Paris is, geez, it took us 90 minutes just to get there, even though we're so far out, they came to us because they know, you know, we're gonna get the job done. And we're just two rotators at that. So they actually just started a YouTube channel too, I was checking out, they got a couple videos. I'm gonna tag them right here and post their channel in the description if you guys wanna head on over to subscribe. Who knows, maybe one day they're gonna overtake me. I think, uh, it says 162,000 subscribers now. Well, we'll see, I may have some competition from them soon. But I think the true star of the show is going to be this one. This is my 50,000 pound working load limit, mass load, tension link, wireless load cell. So you put this baby with this, you just turn it on and they're obviously pre-synced already. Now this is a tool that is so valuable that not enough people, if any, even have. Why, I don't know. When I went to training for heavy duty training at the time for the CTTA course, had mentioned that every tow truck operator that does rigging, pulling, whatever, should have one of these. And for good reason. There are some rotators that have the load cell built in to the boom head itself. That'll allow you to read, you know, what you're lifting if you're exceeding the total capacity of the truck. These allow you to read individual lines. I can put this on any part of, you know, the casualty. I can put this where my boom lines terminate. I can put this in between shock, wherever, and it'll read the force. So it's not an actual scale scale, like I mentioned in the video. A good example is if you've ever weighed yourself, and let's say you weigh 200 pounds, well, if you crouch really hard and kind of like put force on it, that thing's gonna shoot up a ton. And if you do the opposite, if you kind of like stand up on your tippy toes and feather yourself, it's gonna read less. Now that doesn't mean your body's defying the laws of thermodynamics. You're not changing your body weight, you're changing the force that's on the scale. That's what these things do. The reason I don't use them on every single lift is because a lot of them are routine. You know, I've done a billion containers already and this channel is practically like 80% container rollovers. But when you get to these big jobs or if you're just starting and you wanna learn more about rigging, invaluable, like I said, 
Now, they don't all come in this huge monster size. They make them bigger, they make them smaller. I just highly recommend, um, if you're in the towing industry or the rigging industry, tell your boss, Josh at Beppa says this is invaluable. Check this out, you need it. And he's probably gonna tell you who the heck is Josh. That guy looks like an idiot and he's got holes in his ears. That's cool, but still, you need this if you're serious about rigging. You can pick up the manual you know, for your vehicle, for your truck, and you can know everything spec-wise about it. But until you get a load cell and you start playing with it and messing with it, and you know how different angles affect the actual force of what you're pulling, you don't really know your truck. That's why I get sent to me all day, every day on Instagram, Facebook, and even emails from fans of, hey, check out this rollover, this tow truck, rip the line or like those tow truck shows that you see from canada for whatever reason they're constantly ripping chains and lines they're always like you know dramatic where the line will snap and go into the back of the truck and it's all oh no one saw that coming well yeah that's because they're probably overloading their stuff you know if something's rolled over and it's in a ditch there's formulas for that but even formulas it's all just in a book in the real world it's hard to calculate you know using a book of how much force this line is going to see and if you have a chain and you're putting it to something that doesn't have wheels or it's buried in mud or it's on a 30 degree slope. All of those different factors combined add to the force of what you're pulling. Now, unless you have a load cell on the line itself, it's gonna be next to impossible to calculate how much force you're seeing. And it's so, so, so easy. You see how fast the lines just start spiking to overload your equipment. Once you do that, they'll never be the same. Your working load limit is diminished. And then you do it again and again and again until eventually, boom, pop goes a weasel. That's how accidents happen and fatalities happen, unfortunately. So these low cells, again, I mean, game changers. That's why if you notice in the second part when we did the lift um, for the second time, Alex had two of his platinum slings on each side. That's because when we did the first lift and I was like, whoa, you spiked to 41, 42,000. Those slings are rated at 40,000 pounds. Doesn't mean they break at that. You can exceed it by a lot. They break at five times that but you never, ever, ever, ever want to exceed your working load limit. You never go by the safety factor. So we wouldn't have known that had it not been for these load cells. Now, I wish I was taller and I would have seen where they were at for the first lift, but I mean, it's cool because we got to do it a second time and you saw it there. I was seeing close to just under 50, like 45, 46, give or take. And Alex was seeing it between 70 to 80. It fluctuated. It's going to do that because as you go in, your lines don't have the same amount of tension. So the load cell line might be going higher than the other one at first and then this one and then once it's in the air and then as the truck in the front puts more force it, it can affect them all that's why i got two in hulk um i gotta get alex a second one because he only has one like this but going forward as we get these big jobs it's just really cool to put them on and play with the numbers so after i film this i'm gonna hit them up because i'm always referring different people to them um i'm gonna see if they'll be able to work with me that way i can get you guys like a discount I know I get tons of, tons of, tons of people from all over the country and honestly the world, man, um, Australia, South America, wherever, of people in towing that say, hey, you know, I don't do the crazy stuff you do, but I'm in towing and I want to get into it. Well, hopefully I'll be able to get a, a referral code for you guys, maybe like, I don't know, whatever discount. Just make sure when you hit them up, you say, hey, Josh at Peppa sent me and see if they can hook you up with the discount. So as always, thank you guys for sticking around to the end. Please run to the comments. I'm curious to see, you know, what everyone says about this. Leave a comment on what you thought the job itself was like, the weight of the thing, um, the standby time, whatever. Even leave a hateful comment because those ones get screenshot and um, shared between all of us the most so we can laugh at you. All comments are welcome. Looking forward to reading them all. Peace out, guys. Catch you on the next one.